Welcome back to the series on searching and sorting. In this part, we present binary search. So can we do better than linear search? Meaning, is there a potentially more efficient way to search through an array? Well, suppose that the array were sorted. How might we exploit this structure? Again, we're searching for a key element k. To start, let's examine the middle element, call it m. If we get lucky and m matches our key, then we're done. Otherwise, we have one of two situations. If the key element is less than the middle element, then if it exists in the array, it must lie in the left half of the array. Again, this is because the array is sorted. We know that everything in the right half is greater than m, and so k cannot lie in that half. Likewise, if the key is greater than the middle element, then the key must lie in the right half of the array, if it exists. Here's that idea illustrated. Looking at the middle element means that we can effectively cut the array in half. Everything to the left is less than m, and everything to the right is greater. This process can then be repeated, cutting the array in half each time and reducing the number of comparisons we have to make to search for k. Let's run through a concrete example. Here we have an array of integers sorted. We'll start with two index variables, l for left and r for right, and start them at their respective ends. Suppose that we're searching for the element 42, which will result in a successful search. First, we examine the middle element at index 5. 12 is less than our key element, so we've eliminated half the list as a possibility for searching. We update our left index to 6, so that we're only searching elements from index 6 through 10. Now we update our new middle element, because we want to look at the middle of the new subarray from 6 to 10. Looking at this element, we find 102, which is greater than our key element 42, and so we've eliminated the right half of the sub part of the array. We've narrowed it down to only indices 6 and 7, with only two comparisons. Our new middle index is 6. We won't always be able to split up the array into two equal parts. 34 is less than our key 42, so we update the left index to 7, at which point we've found the element that we're looking for. If you were counting along, we only had to make four comparisons to find 42. If we had used linear search instead, starting from the beginning, we would have had to make eight comparisons. Let's go through a simple C implementation of this idea. Let's do an index-based binary search implementation. Our return value will be an integer. But we'll need to take some more elements here. Instead of passing in the size, I'm going to pass in the left and the right index. And of course, the key value. Now the idea here is that we're going to use recursion we're going to use a divide and conquer strategy to perform a binary search. Given the left index and the right index, we'll compute the middle index, make our comparison, and then make a recursive call on the left half of the list or the right half of the list, depending on the ordering of the key and the middle element. The first thing we need to take care of though is our base case. When would binary search result in an unsuccessful search? it would be when those two indices cross each other. In other words, when the left index exceeds the right index. Once that occurs, then we can conclude that the element does not exist because we now effectively have an empty array. Otherwise, we need to compute our middle index. Here I'm relying on truncation. This is actually a little bit bad to do in practice and can lead to bugs because of overflow, but for now it'll be okay. Now if we get lucky and find the key at the middle element, we simply return M. Otherwise, if the key is less than the middle element, 
then that must mean that if it exists, the key would be in the left half of the array. We'll make a recursive call to binary search on the left half. The array is unchanged. The left index stays the same, but the right index is updated to m minus one. We don't include the element at m because we already checked that with the first if conditional. The key is also unchanged. Now, if the key is greater than the middle element, then we'll need to recurse on the right half of the list. Here, the left index is updated to m plus one. The right index stays the same, as does the key in the array. Let's go ahead and test this. First of all, it won't work on this array because it's not sorted. So let's create an array that is sorted. In fact, let's use the array that we were using in our example. Let's search for 42. To do so, we need to start our indices at zero and 10 because there are 11 elements in the array and we'll search for 42. Just as in our example, 42 was located at index seven. Let's search for an extremal element. Negative three should be at index zero. Hundred and eighty would be at the end. Let's make an unsuccessful search. And it returns that flag variable. Few things to note here. Strictly speaking, we didn't need that third conditional right here. I kept it in for demonstration purposes. That is, if the middle element is not equal to k or strictly greater than k, then it must be strictly less than k. So I could convert this last else if into a simple else and avoid that last comparison. I'm going to make yet another improvement though. I'm going to eliminate the recursion on this algorithm. We don't need to be making function call after function call. Let me go ahead and rename this one. and create a non-recursive version instead. In this case, we simply take the array, its size, and the key that we're searching for. Instead of passing in left and right as function parameters, we'll declare them and initialize them here. Now, instead of recursive calls, and we'll go ahead and write a simple loop. While the left index is less than or equal to the right index, we still have a section of the array to search. Only when they pass each other and L becomes larger than R, do we terminate this loop and report that an unsuccessful search occurred. Inside this loop, we need to compute the middle element. Otherwise we make our checks. If the middle element matches our key, then we return M. If the key is less than the middle element, then in the next iteration, we need to search on the left half of the list. This means that we simply only need to update the right index variable. If the key is greater, then we simply need to update the left index variable. I'll go ahead and eliminate that conditional while I'm at it. Let's make sure it still works.
Each one of the test cases that I tested before still works, but I have the added benefit of simplifying the code and avoiding recursion. Now that we've seen both linear search and binary search, which one is better and how much better, we can quantify how good an algorithm is by analyzing how much work it performs. Intuitively, less work means less resources, computation time, memory, etc., which is generally preferable. Let's keep our analysis abstract. Suppose that we wanted to search an array containing n elements. One way to quantify how much work each of the algorithms performs is by analyzing how many comparisons each one performs when actually searching the array. Let's start with linear search. We can look at this from several different perspectives. In the best case scenario, we get lucky and immediately find the element that we're looking for, making only a single comparison and stopping. Generally, this is not a good way to analyze algorithms. We can't always assume the best case scenario. What about the worst case scenario? In that case, we get lucky and find the element at the last index, or we fail to find any matching elements at all. In this case, we would have had to make n comparisons, one for each element in the input array. We could also look at it from an average case scenario, which would require a much deeper analysis than we have time to go into here. However, we'd come up with something very close to n divided by two comparisons in the average case. That's why this algorithm is called linear search, because the work required to execute this algorithm is linearly proportional to the array size being searched. Let's analyze binary search. We'll stick to the worst case scenario where we don't find an element or when we cut the array size down to one and finally find the element. As we witnessed before, each comparison cuts the array roughly in half on each iteration. So after the first iteration, the array size is about n divided by two. After the second, it's about n divided by four. The third, it's n over eight. And in general, after k iterations, the size of the array is n divided by two to the k. The last iteration is when the algorithm has cut down the array to a size of one. So all we have to do is solve for k, giving us log base two of n. Thus binary search only requires a logarithmic number of comparisons to search a sorted array. Let's compare the two algorithms then. Linear search requires roughly n comparisons, while binary search requires log base two of n comparisons. There's a stark difference between these two functions. Linear search is exponentially worse than binary search. Or from another perspective, binary search is exponentially faster than linear search. Here's another more practical way to compare the two algorithms. Suppose that we have a database of one trillion elements. If the database were unsorted, we would have to use linear search. On average, we would expect to make about 500 billion comparisons to find the record that we're searching for. In contrast, if the database were sorted, that's called indexing in the context of databases, then we could exploit binary search and only have to make log base two of one trillion elements, which comes out to only 40 comparisons. 40 comparisons versus 500 billion. Clearly binary search is the far better algorithm here. Finally, let's take one more perspective to compare them. Specifically, we'll look at the growth rate of these functions as the array size that we want to search grows. Suppose that we double the size of the array that we're searching, taking it from n elements up to two n elements. Linear search, as the name indicates, would mean that we're making twice as many comparisons to search this new doubled size array. In other words, doubling the input size doubles the number of comparisons. In contrast, doubling the input size with binary search only requires log base two of two n comparisons. Applying some log identities means that only one additional comparison is needed to search the array. In the case of binary search, doubling the input size only adds one more operation. It's no contest. Binary search is clearly the better algorithm. The only problem is it requires the array to be sorted, otherwise it doesn't work. In the next part, we'll turn our attention to that related problem, sorting.